Preparations are in full swing at Starbase as SpaceX gears up for the seventh integrated flight test of Starship. This past week has seen a flurry of critical activities and tests designed to ensure the vehicles are ready for the historic mission. On December 5th, after meticulous preparation and installation of all 33 Raptor engines, Booster 14 was transported from the production facility to the launch site in a carefully coordinated rollout. Upon arrival, the massive booster was carefully lifted and secured atop the launch mount, a critical step to prepare it for the static fire test. Before lighting up the engines, SpaceX conducted a spin prime test on December 7, which is an essential part of the pre-launch procedure. During this test, the turbo pumps of all 33 engines were spun up to operational speeds by circulating cryogenic propellants through the system, but without actually igniting the engines. This process helps engineers confirm that the pumps, valves, and plumbing systems are functioning properly, ensuring there are no leaks and that the propellant flow is smooth and uninterrupted. Two days later, on December 9th, SpaceX conducted the static fire test. During this test, all 33 Raptor engines were ignited simultaneously for approximately 10 seconds while the booster was securely held in place on the launch mount. This test gave engineers a valuable opportunity to thoroughly assess the engine's performance, the efficiency of the fuel systems, and the overall structural integrity of the vehicle under real conditions. In addition to verifying the booster's readiness, the static fire test also confirmed that the modifications and repairs made to the launch pad infrastructure after the Flight 6 test in November were effective. With the static fire test deemed successful, Booster 14 was carefully removed from a launch mount on Tuesday morning. During the de-stacking operation, the booster was lifted to the top of the tower and held for several minutes to test the tower arm stability and load-bearing capacity. After undergoing minor repairs following Flight 6, the arms needed to prove they could support the booster's full weight without defamation or failure. This verification ensures they can handle the loads during the booster catch attempt in Flight 7. After the de-stacking, Booster 14 was transported back to the production site. After arriving at the site, teams immediately began installing scaffolding frames around the common dome area of the booster, indicating that they needed to work on that specific region to fix something maybe some minor fixes or some additional stringers. The exact nature of the work should become clear in the coming days as operations progress. Currently, the booster is housed inside the mega bay, where it will undergo final processing, thorough checkouts, and detailed inspections. The next time Booster 14 rolls out to the launch pad, it will be for the actual launch attempt. On Wednesday morning, Starship 33 was transported to the Massey's test site for static fire testing after successfully completing the installation of all six engines. This prototype marks a significant milestone for SpaceX, as it is the first Block 2 variant, featuring substantial design improvements. These include enhanced thermal protection systems with new and improved heat tiles, more efficient internal and external structural design changes, and optimized aerodynamic surfaces for better control and stability during re-entry. Since Ship 33 is the first Block 2 prototype to undergo a static fire, SpaceX was cautious while proceeding towards the test. On Thursday evening, they performed a spin prime test involving all six Raptor engines to validate the readiness of the propellant delivery systems and ensure the engines were primed correctly. Following this, the next 36 hours were dedicated to rigorous checks on the vehicle, examining every subsystem for any potential anomalies. SpaceX attempted a static fire test on Saturday morning, but it didn't go as planned. During the test, the propellant tanks were filled to typical levels for a static fire, engine chill sequences were performed to bring the engines to their operational temperatures, and the flame trench systems were activated. Despite these preparations, the engines failed to ignite, likely due to a last-second abort triggered by engine issues. Given the new design changes in Starship Block 2, SpaceX is being extra cautious during testing. Even small deviations in the new systems could lead to issues, so the test may have been aborted to prevent potential failures. On Sunday afternoon, they successfully conducted the full-duration static fire test, igniting all six engines for approximately 10 seconds while the ship was secured to the test stand. This milestone marked the first time a Starship Block 2 vehicle had ignited its engines. One key focus of the test was validating the redesigned propellant delivery system, which includes the newly engineered downcomer and other internal components, ensuring efficient and stable propellant flow to the engines. Additionally, the test also served to validate the structural integrity of the Block 2 vehicle by subjecting the ship's structure to the intense forces and stresses of engine operation. It remains uncertain whether additional static fire tests will be conducted in the coming days. However, further tests would provide SpaceX with valuable data on the effectiveness of the Block 2 design improvements, 
allowing for any necessary refinements to be made for future prototypes. Once testing is complete, Ship 33 will return to the production site to begin preparations for Flight 7. As per a recent NASA document filed with the FAA, Flight 7 could occur as early as January 11th. However, the launch timeline hinges on approval from key regulatory bodies, including the FAA. According to FAA regulations, any significant changes to a launch vehicle or its operations must be reviewed thoroughly. Since SpaceX is using the upgraded Starship 33, the FAA will assess its design, operations, and potential risks to ensure it meets safety and regulatory standards before granting the launch license. The license is expected to be issued before the proposed January 11th launch date. On Wednesday evening, SpaceX conducted a series of comprehensive tests on the chopstick arms by raising them to their highest position on the launch tower, the location where they will be positioned for the booster catch. In total, 16 actuation tests were performed to assess various movement parameters and response times. Of these tests, four involved full-speed booster catch simulations, where both arms were actuated simultaneously to replicate the intense conditions expected during an actual booster catch. Ten tests focused solely on the right arm, while two tests specifically evaluated the left arm in isolation. These tests aim to validate the chopstick arm's functionality, refine their performance, and ensure they operate reliably for a successful booster catch during Starship Flight 7. The construction of the second launch pad is progressing swiftly in parallel with Flight 7 preparations. The flame trench is taking shape near the launch tower, and teams are also working on the draw work mechanism, which connects to the tower arm carriage. This mechanism allows for controlled movement of the arms up and down the tower. The pad B orbital launch mount continues to take shape at the Sanchez site. Teams are currently finalizing the second layer of the mount, which will accommodate the outer 20 booster quick disconnect mechanisms. Once this layer is completed, the top layer, which includes the water deluge system, will be assembled. In addition, refinements to the arms, carriage system, and ship quick disconnect are being made at Sanchez in preparation for their eventual installation on the tower. The tower is expected to be ready soon to receive the new chopsticks mechanism. Meanwhile, SpaceX continues to expand the tank farm capacity to meet the requirements of both launch pads in the future. Four new horizontal propellant storage tanks were delivered to the launch site this past week to join the existing storage tanks. These new tanks are currently being installed and integrated into the propellant supply systems. At the production site, work has begun on Starship 35, the third Starship Block 2 prototype. The nose cone and payload base sections were moved into the high bay this week, and they were subsequently joined together. The completed assembly was then transferred to the Star Factory for final processing and quality checks, including detailed inspections and any necessary structural reinforcements to ensure it meets all flight requirements. Once these tasks are completed, the nose cone assembly will be moved to Mega Bay 2, where it will be integrated with the remaining ring sections of the ship. Ship 35 is slated to fly on Flight 9, paired with Booster 16. Stacking of Booster 16's ring sections is currently underway inside Mega Bay. Meanwhile, Starship launch pad construction activities have resumed at Kennedy Space Center's launch complex LC-39 after being paused for nearly two years. Teams are currently decommissioning the vertical liquid oxygen storage tank as part of SpaceX's plan to replace it with horizontal tanks. Similar to Starbase, all storage tanks at Kennedy will be horizontal to prevent potential tank damage during Starship launches. We can soon expect horizontal propellant storage tanks to be delivered to Pad 39A. Modifications to Pad 39A also include a new style orbital launch mount, designed similarly to the one under construction for Starbase Pad B. Initially, SpaceX planned to build the old-style, tall launch mount with a water deluge system at Pad 39A. However, after analyzing data from earlier Starship launches, SpaceX decided to redesign the pad. The new design features a square-shaped launch mount with a flame deflector to better manage the intense heat and acoustic energy produced during launches. As part of this redesign, the six vertical launch mount legs previously constructed were demolished in March to make way for the flame trench. However, excavation work has not yet begun. Meanwhile, two weeks ago, components for the new LC-39A Starship launch mount were spotted at SpaceX's Roberts Road facility within Kennedy Space Center. This indicates that launch mount assembly processes will soon begin at Roberts Road, mirroring the construction activities at Starbase. In parallel, excavation work for the flame trench at Pad 39A is expected to start soon. The presence of multiple active Starship launch pads will enable more frequent and reliable launches. 
which is essential for SpaceX to meet its ambitious goals, such as supporting the Artemis missions to the moon and ultimately advancing Mars colonization. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. NASA's Artemis campaign leadership recently held a news conference to announce critical updates regarding the Artemis program. Let's discuss the key details revealed. The major revelation is that the Artemis II mission, originally planned for September 2025, has been postponed to April 2026. This delay results from findings related to heat shield erosion observed during the Artemis I mission. Artemis I, launched in November 2022, was an uncrewed mission designed to test the Orion spacecraft and the Space Launch System rocket. The mission successfully orbited the Moon, returned to Earth, and splashed down in the Pacific Ocean. However, post-flight analysis showed significant issues with the Orion spacecraft's heat shield, particularly the unexpected loss of charred materials during re-entry. An investigation revealed that the heat shield's ablative outer material, Avcoat, did not allow gases generated during re-entry to escape adequately, leading to unexpected cracking and material loss. Findings showed that while some areas of Avcoat performed as expected, others with insufficient permeability exhibited cracking due to trapped gases. After extensive analysis and testing, NASA concluded that the heat shield damage was significant but manageable. As a result, rather than replacing the heat shield for Artemis II, they opted to implement modifications informed by ground test results. The re-entry profile for Artemis II will also be adjusted by shortening the skip phase to reduce material stress and prevent further material loss. As a result of the Artemis II delay, the Artemis III mission, planned to land astronauts on the moon using Starship Human Landing System rocket, has also been pushed back. Initially set for September 2026, it is now targeted for mid-2027. Meanwhile, preparations for Artemis II are advancing steadily. NASA has begun stacking the solid rocket boosters for the Artemis II SLS rocket at the Kennedy Space Center. Each SRB stands 54 meters tall and consists of five segments. Currently, one segment from each booster has been placed on the mobile launcher, with four more segments remaining to be added. Once SRB stacking is complete, NASA will proceed to stack the core stage, which is 65 meters tall and currently housed in the Vehicle Assembly Building. After the core stage is installed, the stage adapter which connects the core stage to the upper stage will be added. Following this, the upper stage will be integrated, and finally, the Orion capsule will be installed. Once the full rocket assembly is complete, NASA will conduct a wet dress rehearsal. Following this the rocket will be prepared for the Artemis II mission. The European Space Agency's Vegas C rocket successfully lifted off from French Guiana on December 5, marking a triumphant return to flight after a two-year hiatus. The mission carried the Sentinel-1C Earth observation satellite into orbit. Approximately 103 minutes after liftoff, the satellite was deployed into a sun-synchronous orbit at an altitude of 700 kilometers, with an inclination of 98.5 degrees. Sentinel-1 is the first of the European Space Agency's Copernicus program satellite constellations designed to provide comprehensive, all-weather, day and night radar imaging capabilities. Initially, the constellation consisted of two identical satellites, Sentinel-1A and Sentinel-1B, which were launched in 2014 and 2016, respectively. Sentinel-1A remains operational and continues to deliver critical data for various applications, including land and maritime monitoring, disaster management, and climate change studies. However, Sentinel-1B was retired in December 2021 due to a power supply failure that made it incapable of delivering radar data. To ensure continuous coverage and data flow, Sentinel-1C now fills the gap left by its predecessor. Additionally, Sentinel-1D is in development to further strengthen the constellation's capabilities. The 35-meter-tall, four-stage Vega C rocket is a European expendable, small-lift launch vehicle developed as an improved version of the original Vega rocket series to meet increasing demand for small to medium satellite launches. The first three stages of the rocket use solid propellants, while the fourth stage features a reignitable liquid propellant engine. Vega C is capable of delivering payloads up to 2,350 kg into a 700 km sun synchronous orbit or up to 2,250 kg into a 500 km polar orbit. The successful launch of Vega C on December 5 follows a significant setback in December 2022 when its second mission failed to reach orbit. The failure was traced back to a malfunction in the second stage's DeFiro 4D motor. Investigations revealed that the nozzle design was flawed, leading to a redesign and extensive static fire testing of the motor before the Vega C was cleared for Flight 3. 
Looking ahead, Vegasy has several planned launches in the upcoming years, including more Sentinel satellites as well as other commercial payloads. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.